diagnosis and parallel in doctors. When we were talking about capacitance, we said that when capacitance are connected in series, we will treat them just like the way we will treat resistors that are connected in parallel. And then when capacitance are connected in parallel, we will treat them just like we will treat resistors that are connected in series. But for an inductor, when inductors are connected in series, we will treat them just like we will treat resistors connected in series. And then when resistors are connected in parallel, we will treat them just like we will treat resistors connected in parallel. For example, when resistors are connected in series and then we are looking for the total resistance, it is just going to be the action of the resistances together. That is exactly what we are doing for inductors here that are connected in series. So total inductance, when, inductor, when, it, when we have inductors connected in series will be addition of the inductances that we have. That gives us L1 plus L2 in the case where we have just two inductors connected in series uh, in a circuit. Also, as you can see here, each inductor will have different voltages and then the current passing through them will be the same. So you just add them together and then you get the total inductance you have in the circuit. And then for parallel connection, just like we said, from what you can see here, you can see two inductors here connected in parallel. The current passing through them is different and then they have the same voltage across them. So in that particular case, you would treat this exactly the way you treat the resistors connected in parallel or shunt connection of resistors. That is the way you're going to, the way you treat the resistors in parallel is the way you're going to treat inductors in parallel. So what you have here is one over one over L total will be equal to one over L1 plus one over L2. Pay attention to, to those analyses, how you treat inductors, how you treat capacitance, how you treat, how you treat inductors, how you treat capacitors connected in series, and how you treat inductors connected in series, and how you treat, treat resistors connected in series. Pay attention to those. All right, let's go ahead. So what I just explained a couple of minutes ago is what is demystified here. The equivalent of a chain of series connected inductors is a single inductor whose inductance is the sum of all the individual inductances that we have. That we have. So what you see here is we have different inductors, L1, L2, L3, L4, right down to the last one, Ln. All right. So to find the total inductance is just going to be one single inductance, okay, which is going to be the sum of all the inductances that we have. So Ls will be L1 plus L2 plus L3 right up to Ln, and then that gives us Ls. The same thing goes for the parallel connection of uh, inductors. The equivalent of parallel inductors is a single inductor whose inverse inductance is the sum of inverses of the parallel inductor. So you have 1 over LP will be equal to 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus 1 over L2 right on to 1 over LN. You add all of those together that way, then you can find your parallel connection for uh, par parallel, you know, connection inductors that you do have. All right. So you can see this is parallel connection. This is series connection. And the currents are different, but then the voltages are going to be the same for parallel connection. The voltages are different for series connection and then the currents are the same for series connection of inductors. All right, let's take it a step further. Here is another example we could quickly check out together. Find the equivalent inductance for the following circuit, then find D, where D is the voltage. So what you will see here is that these are in series, isn't it? these are in series if they are in series and you add them together addition of these two together will give us two henry because they are in series so you just add them together so if they are in series that means you now have just one single connection now you now have two here and then the ones connected in series you can have them here again which is going to be two henry because if you add one plus one it gives you two so you have these here we have these and then we continue here we continue here and then we have these here so if you if this continues these ones are going to be in parallel isn't it if they are in parallel how do you find the resistances in parallel it's just going to be two times two divided by two plus two isn't it so if you do that this is going to be equal to one henry 
So it simply means everything here is going to be one Henry. That is what it simply means. One plus one is two because they are in series. Then two and two are parallel. Two times two divided by two plus two will give us one. So everything in the, this three put together gives us one Henry. So this will give us just one single single inductance, which is one Henry here. So here you can say we can close these out, forget about these here, and then you can put just one more here, and then we say you have one Henry here. This becomes one Henry here. Okay? So, and then we'll forget about this, because we have converted all of these to one Henry. So what you will find again is that these two are going to be in series, right? In this one in series, you have 3 over 2 plus 1. 3 over 2 plus 1 is the same thing as 5 over 2. So now you're now going to have 5 over, now you have 5 over, you have 5 over 3 here, right? And then you have another one here, now we have 5 over 2 here. So, and then you have this connection this way. You have your connection this way, and then this goes to your source. Okay, you have your V plus here. And then you have this here, and then this is your current. So you have 5 over 3 and 5 over 2 here. So if you have 5 over 3 and 5 over 2 connected now in parallel, how do you find? This becomes five, 1 divided by 1 over 5 over 2 plus 1 divided by 1 over 5 over 3. Okay, so if you do all of these, you should obtain the figure. I'm not entirely sure what you will obtain, but we can quickly do that together right now. Or we can do 5 over 3 times 5 over 2, all divided by 5 over 3 plus 5 over 2. So whatever you obtain when you treat these, or when you treat these entire stuff, they will be the same thing by way. That would be the equivalent inductance that we have here. So once you find that, you can then go ahead and find your voltage. Our circuits and our calculations here. Let's see how that plays out. All right. So here is it. So our L equivalent for this other side here is 2 dot 2 by 2 plus 2. That is 1 at every. When you do that, you put 1 here. You have 1 plus 3 over 3 is 5 over 2. So you can see we have 1 over L equivalent is 1 over 5 over 3 plus 1 over 5 over 2. That would also be equal to one. Wow. Okay. So that is also equal to one. So if you have these, that simply means that you have the entire inductance when you find the equivalent of all of this is going to be one. So L equivalent is going to be one Henry. If L equivalent is one Henry, we know that our voltage across that one Henry will be L the I the T. L is one when we have the I the T. What is our I? Our I is 60. I is a function of time. Like we said, uh, it's. Uh, Unlikely that the current will be constant. If the current is constant, then we have just the short circuit. So we have L the I the T here. Instead of writing I here, you put 60 here. 6 is a constant, you take constant out. So you have L the T the T. The T the T will cancel out. So you just have 1 times 6. So your V will be equal to 6 volts at the end of the day. So here, what we have is another example that we can check out. We have a problem or a question here that says calculate the voltage. Calculate the voltage across the 100 milli Henry. So you can see the circuit here. You can see we have L called 100 milli Henry here. And then if we have a current source, so the current is going this way. So calculate the voltage across the 100 milli Henry inductor, milli Henry inductor, with the current shown in the figure on the right hand side. This is the figure on the right hand side. Here. So what you see here is you can be given these functions and then be asked to and then be asked to draw the time waveform or the current time graph for the inductor. If you are going to do that, first of all, when the current is zero, time is less than one, you will find out that this is zero here. You will find out that this is zero, this is one, this should be three here, uh, this is five, and then this is seven. And then it goes on and on like that. So when time is less than one, when time is less than one seconds, from this one down to zero, our current is zero. So you can see current is zero. And since zero is a constant, you can just keep drawing, pull this line straight until you get to one. Yeah. 
when current is greater than one and less than five, you are going to obtain some value. So, so when current is greater than one, the first value that is greater than one, you can pick it as two. If you don't want to work with decimals, just pick the nearest whole number. In this case, it is two. So if you pick two, put two here, you have two minus one. Two minus one, if you put two in this current value, current expression, you have two minus one. Two minus one, it gives us one. One times one over four is one over four. One over four is the same thing as 0 0.25. So that means halfway between 0, 0.0 and 0 0.5 will be 0 0.25. So if you scroll up here, you can see this is going to be about 0 0.25 somewhere here. This is halfway that journey. So that is why you can see we have, you can see at current, at time equal to two, we have current is 0 0.25 here. Can you see that? Also, if you decide to say, okay, what, what if time is three? You have three minus one. Three minus one gives us two. Two times one over four will give us one over two. One over two is 0 0.5. So at three, you can see that our current will be 0 0.5. At four, our current will be 0 0.75 if you put that in here. And then at five, because it's less than or equal to five. So at five, our current will be equal to one. So you can just easily pull, uh, connect all the dots, and then you have a straight line from time equal to one to time equal to five. You can see we have this figure here. Okay. Also, the next current function gives us current equal to one. This is another constant. So when current is one, you can scroll up here. Our time is greater than or equal, greater than five and less than or equal, greater than or equal to five and less than or equal to nine. So you start from five right on until you get to nine. This is our nine down to this point here. This is nine here. So. That means you go from one, it's constant, there's no, there's no, there's no variable here, so time is constant, current is constant throughout, yeah? so you just draw a straight line, it's constant, constant, or it's in nine, and then it stops there. So you go to the next current graph, you have time greater than or equal to nine, less than or equal to 13, you do the same thing. When time is 10, okay, greater than or equal to nine, so for nine we know it already, so let's just start with the nearest value greater than nine. When time is 10, you have 10 minus 13. 10 minus 13 is minus 3. Minus 3 times minus 1 over 4. Minus will cancel minus. You are left with 3 over 4. 3 over 4 is the same thing as 0 0.75. So you'll find out that when time is 10 here, this is 10. If you go up, you see you have 0 0.75 here. This is 0 0.75. So if you pick 11, you're going to get a value here, which is 5. If you pick 12, you're going to get a value here, which is going to be 0 0.25. If you pick 13 itself, it becomes uh, zero. So you're going to get zero here for the current. Okay. So you join the line, the dots together, and then you can see you have, if you connect the dots together, so you have this shape, and then it goes down right up to this particular point. And then the last current says, when time is greater than or equal to 13, your current is zero. So from 13 down or from, 13, from greater than or equal to 13, or from 13 upward, your current will be equal to zero. So uh, the journey goes on straight and then you have a full, and then you have a full graph, you have a full graph here. All right, so you can create your equations from this graph, and then you can also, you know, uh, create your graph from these expressions that we do have. Here. So all, all we have here is just that we've been able to analyze the current time graph or the time waveform for the inductor for the current, but then the same should calculate the voltage across these. Okay, so to calculate the voltage now, what do we do? So don't forget, we already have all the current, so how do we find the voltage? We know that our voltage, our voltage is equal to L, the I, the T, okay, from the previous discussions we've had. First of all, when B, when I is equal to zero and you want to find the voltage, you know we have our voltage, would be equal to the I of T dt the then multiplied by the inductance. So from what we do have here, what you will see is that when when current is zero, the first current given to us, if you flip back a bit, first current given to us is zero. So voltage will just be equal to L the I dt. The I dt will be equal to zero. So the entire voltage there will be zero at T less than one second. Also we have another one here. Current is one over four T minus one. If you Find the ID if you differentiate this, you have you have our inductance is 10 raised to power minus one. 
milli Henry, you don't forget milli Henry is 10 raised to the power minus 3. 10 raised to the power minus 3 multiplied by 100 will give us 10 raised to the power minus 1. That is, that is where this 10 raised to the power minus 1 is coming from. So L is 10 raised to the power minus 1 multiplied by 1 over 4. When you differentiate this, you, you have 1 over 4 here, all right? When you differentiate this particular current here, you have 1 over 4. So you have 10 raised to the power minus 1 times 1 over 4, that gives 0 0.025. All right, and then when you differentiate current equal to one, you are going to get this is another constant. So when you differentiate the constant, you get zero. So at that particular point, your v would also be equal to zero. All right, when you differentiate minus one over four t minus thirteen here, what are you going to have when you differentiate this? You have uh, minus one over four. Okay, so what you will see here. Is minus is here, 10 raised to the power minus 1 times 1 over 4 here. This is minus 1 over 4 is also here. Yeah. And so you're going to have to minus 0 0.025 volts. Okay, so you have that. Also, you see when current is 0, when you differentiate this, you're going to obtain uh, this is a constant. So if you differentiate that, you get a constant. So 0 multiplied by, you get 0. 0 multiplied by L gives us voltage is equal to 0. All right. So, all of these values, if you plug it into the waveform, if you want to make them waveform for t less than one, uh, for when the time is less than one, you can see that voltage is zero. So voltage is just going to be zero until we get to this particular point here. This is one, as you can see right, right here. This is our one. So voltage is constant until we get to zero. Also, you can see that voltage is also constant from t greater than one greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 5. Uh, we are moving from this 0 0.025 here, sorry, we are moving from 0 0.025 and that's going to be constant. It's going to go this way until it gets here where we have our time less than or equal to 5. So this is time 5 here. So from 1 to 5, voltage is 0 0.025 and it's going to be constant. Okay. Also from 5 to 9, this is from uh, 5 to 9 here, our voltage is constant, it is 0. So you can see we are beginning from 0 here, right up to we get to 9 here. All right. Also for 9 to 13, 9 here to 13 here, our voltage is constant, it is minus 0 0.025. So you come down to minus 0 0.025, which is from here, it's going to be constant until we get to where we have our 13 here. All right, and then when time is greater than 13, our voltage is zero. So from 13 upward, voltage is also zero, and then it is only constant in you know, this way. So if you connect all of the dots, just connect all of them together. This is what you have. This is what you have as your know, voltage time graph for that particular circuit. Okay, this is very, very important for us. First of all, I need to make a correction here. These this division sign is supposed to be here, guys. Please change it in your note if you have a note pointed at the right it's, or write it somewhere. This division sign is supposed to be here. So this is supposed to be di of t dt. That is what we were supposed to have here. Here is the example. We were asked to find the instantaneous energy. Find the instantaneous energy in the inductor for the current shown in this figure. So this time around, this time around, you will find out that we have the inductor as 10 milli Henry. So milli is 1,000. So 10 over 1,000 will give us 1 over 100, and that gives us 10 raised to power minus 2. Inductance here will be 10 raised to power minus 2. You know that when you want to find your energy, we are supposed to make use of this formula for energy. It's supposed to be energy for an inductor will be half L I squared. Since we are dealing with the time domain, so we have I squared, I of T squared here. All right, so to deal with that, in the place where we have, here our current is constant, so our work done will just be one over two L I, where I is zero, constant, the entire work done will be zero. So you have work done is zero, and then the time limit remains the same. The second current of one over four, a quarter T minus one amperes current, and then we have a time range here. You go ahead and say, okay, half L, L is 10 to the power minus two times one over four T minus one squared. When you expand all of these, 
this is what you are going to have as the expression here. This is just simple mathematics. So you have this expression for your energy. Okay, we have the time limit remaining the same. Also, in a case where you have current as one ampere, this is another constant here. You just put that in here. When current is one, you have one over two times L times one. When you expand that, you get 0 0.005 joules. Okay, so this is the time range for that energy. If you go back again to where current is minus a, minus a quarter, minus one over 40, minus 30. You have to put that back in here. You have one over two times 10 is for minus two, which is over L. Our I is minus. So when you square the minus, it becomes positive. That is why you cannot see the minus appearing here. So you have one over 40 minus 13 squared. So if you expand that, this is what you're going to get. Okay. So the last one, when current is zero. So when current is zero, our energy is going to be zero because you put zero here. Everything here turns zero. Okay, so you have energy to be zero when coming to zero. At the end of the day, what you will find out here is that you get your energy as a function of time with respect to time, as a function of time. Once you have that, we have our limits here. So all you need to do is just keep substituting your limit. When t is less than one, the work done is constant, just from zero to one. So you just draw a line from zero to one. So that is that. Also, which other constants do we have? When time, when current is one, when current is one, we have energy to be constant 0 0.05. You can see we have 0 0.05 here. That will be constant from t equal to five to t equal to nine. So this is gonna be constant right up till we get to nine. Nine down here, and then five, five up here. So this is gonna be constant. And the last constant we have is when the when current is zero. Well, energy is going to be zero. So when current is when 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 current is zero, energy is zero. So when energy is zero, that is that happens from t greater than t equal to thirteen and greater than thirteen. So from this thirteen upward, you have another constant here. So once we have taken care of all the constants, then you can now start taking care of the ones with functions of t, and then you start substituting your time into those. Okay. So when you put your time into those. For example, here time is equal to one or greater than one and less than five. So you can use two, three, and four, and then five. You put those in here, and then you, you, you will get various points. You connect those dots together, and you get this curve. You do the same thing for these, where we have t minus 13, 0 0.3125 times 10 to minus 3 times t minus 13 squared. You do the same thing, you're going to get this call. You join all of those together, you have your energy time graph for these inductor. All right. So uh, this is very important. And then cops for this circuit. This is very, very important. One watt is always equal to one joules per second. So that is exactly what is written out here. If you rewrite these, you can say one joule is equal to one watt times one second. If you cross multiply, you can say that one watt times seconds is equal to one joule, right?